Hi everyone, Shane R. Monroe here. Are you confused about EmuDeck, what it is and what it does? We're going to break out the index cards and teach you everything you need to know about EmuDeck. Stick around. Emulation can be a tricky hobby to get into. Emulation comes in all shapes and sizes, from commercial packages to command line only versions. The depth and breadth of emulation platforms, the power and resources that they need to run effectively, all take a toll on the end user experience. Over the years, hobbyists and developers have done whatever they can to put emulation into the hands of normal people with a certain amount of success. This video isn't going to teach you all about emulation, but rather how the Steam Deck tool EmuDeck can help put emulation into your hands. While it is far easier than many other methods, get ready to roll up your sleeves because it isn't all wine and roses, or Proton. Let's get started. EmuDeck, short word with promises of untold riches, and it actually delivers a lot on those promises. As with my Proton video, let's start off by telling you what EmuDeck is not. EmuDeck is not an emulator. It is not a program that acquires BIOS files or ROMs for you. So what is it? EmuDeck is a very powerful and clever script, a series of actions that look like a program running designed to perform a variety of scripted functions. First, it installs stuff. It automates a lot of the manual work you would otherwise have to do on your own. These things include emulators, support tools, enhancement apps, all designed to make your emulation experience better. Once it's done installing stuff, it configures stuff. This includes the aforementioned emulators, support tools, and enhancement apps. It also creates the necessary file structures, folders for holding all the goodies it downloads, locations for end users to drop BIOS files or ROM files. It's just one less thing that the end user needs to do. Finally, when you run the script again later, it can update stuff. The emulator support tools and enhancement apps it has helped to install and configure. EmuDeck is just the installer exe file. There are four areas we need to cover to fully understand what EmuDeck does and does not do for you. These are the crux of emulation on Steam Deck via EmuDeck. Emulators, BIOS files, ROMs, and of course, Emulation Station, the Chocolate River nerve center of Wonka's factory. Let's start with the thing you probably know the most about, emulators. Emulation as it pertains to EmuDeck comes in two forms, internal emulation, known as RetroArch, and external emulation, other non-RetroArch emulators. Let's start with RetroArch. You may have used this before or at least know it by name. What you may not know is that RetroArch is not an emulator, right? Where are all the emulators at? <laughs> because RetroArch is not one, but it's rather a front end that downloads emulation cores. Each core is an emulator in its own right. Without a core for a particular platform, RetroArch cannot run games for that platform. There are cores or emulators for most platforms prior to PlayStation 2. Most of these cores are headless versions of other emulators you may have used before, like PUAE or PPSSPP. When I say headless, I mean they have no UI of their own. They rely on RetroArch to provide all the user interface to access their settings and to launch games. To access these settings while running a game, click in the analog sticks, L3 plus R3, and you will get the RetroArch menu. Now, to be fair, RetroArch is not known for its ease of use and stellar UI. It is powerful, but that comes at a price. I would need a whole video on its own to discuss how to configure games under RetroArch, and I have shown some of this in some of my other videos. RetroArch also handles some other stuff under the hood, like storing configurations, game save states, and a lot more. It's just a really big topic for a different video. With RetroArch handling a lot of the older stuff, there are other emulators that EmuDeck can install and the front end emulation station can support. And we're going to talk more about emulation station later. These emulators are usually provided because either RetroArch does not have a core for the platform or the external standalone emulators are simply better, faster, or have more options. <laughs> 
These standalones include emulators like Yuzu, DuckStation, and various others. What's nice is that using emulation stations front end, you can opt out of using RetroArch when there is an overlap and use the external versions of the emulators instead, which could give better performance, features, and, well, to be honest, it might be easier for the average person to run and configure an external emulator. That takes care of emulation via EmuDeck, but we have a lot more to cover. BIOS files. If you are old school, BIOS files are just a fact of life for emulation. But if you're new, this can be confusing as all get out. Let's start with what the acronym means. Basic Input Output System. It is enough code and functionality to get a device from the power on state to the system's normal operating system. You might even call it the machine's OS. Where you use Windows on your PC to get work done, your PC needs a BIOS to get you from boot to Windows. Chances are, as a PC user, you've been in your computer's BIOS a couple of times, maybe to set up boot drives or make configuration changes. Almost every emulation platform needs some sort of basic input-output system stuff to get the user from power on to playing a game. This instruction set is usually burned into chips that sit inside the computer or console. Some are very basic indeed, and their functionality can be recreated very easily by an emulator programmer. There is no need to dump the contents of these BIOS chips. In other cases, the BIOS performs a lot more work, including things like security checks. In order for emulators of platforms like PlayStation or Xbox, these BIOS chips have to be read into a file for use by the emulator. These are what you would hear referred to as BIOS files, and EmuDeck makes a special folder for you to put them in. BIOS chips and the code contained on them are often carefully guarded by their manufacturers. Nintendo does not want you dumping BIOS or firmware information from their Switch. Sony does not want you dumping their PlayStation BIOS files. They are fiercely protective and litigious about the distribution of these BIOS dumps. This is why it can be very difficult to acquire them, and even when you do, there are a couple more considerations, of course. Since Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo sell their console to the whole world, each region may need their own BIOS versions. That includes things like changes to the order of how text is displayed, say right to left. And of course, there are language considerations, TV standards such as 50 versus 60 hertz. You could end up with a BIOS made for Europe or Japan instead of the United States. Certain region games may only work on BIOS dumps for their own region. To round off the BIOS madness, there is also multiple versions of BIOS as the life cycle of the machine continued. Version 1.0 may not work for the latest game, whereas some games may run better or faster using a different region's BIOS. Bottom line, BIOS files are needed for some platforms and they can be difficult to obtain and may require certain regions or versions to work with the games you're trying to play. They need to be put in the proper folder, and it is not always the BIOS folder that EmuDeck made, by the way, and they have to be named exactly correct. All right, clear as mud? Great, let's move on. ROMs is something that everybody seems to understand, but let's possibly further your education in the name of science, of course. ROM stands for read-only memory, making reference to the concept that early games, such as those found in arcades or on cartridges, were burned on read-only chips. ROMs would be more accurate to be called dumps, since someone at one point had to take those chips or cartridges and dump the code off of them and put them in a file. These files are what we now call ROMs. The nomenclature isn't 100% accurate, though. After all, games on computer systems don't come on read-only cartridges or chips. They, come on, they came on cassette tapes, floppy disks, and as time has moved on, the games went to CDs, DVDs, and proprietary optical disk media. True, they were read-only in some cases, but to call them ROMs just isn't accurate. And you'll sound a lot smarter in a Discord or Reddit if you ask for the Amiga game Shadow of the Beast disk images instead of for Amiga ROMs. Like BIOS files, these ROMs need to be in the right place and in the right format. Some emulation uses ISO, BinQ, ZIP, 7Z, they may need to be decompressed before they are used. They may have to be merged into CHDs to work right. There's a whole plethora of piñatas. 
Unlike BIOS files, though, ROMs almost always go into the ROMs folder created by Emudec and into a subfolder named after the platform in question, like NES or 3DS. In the interest of being transparent, just because you find a ROM image on the internet doesn't mean it's free and legal to use however you like. Nintendo has little interest in seeing you run Switch games on your deck, and there are always possibilities of getting involved with potential legalities when trying to emulate platforms that are still making money for their copyright holders. All right, we're almost done. We have one last thing to cover, and it's a big thing. When you're using EmuDeck, what you're really likely using day-to-day -day is something that EmuDeck installed and configured for you called Emulation Station, specifically the Desktop Edition. So what is that? Remember I said earlier that RetroArch is rather unfriendly in its presentation? Feature-rich, but kind of ugly, designed to be a jack-of-all-trades and master of none. God bless the developers, but I could not enjoy emulation if that was the conveyance to get there. Enter Emulation Station, a friendly user interface front end to augment the rather unfriendly UI known as RetroArch. For most people, Emulation Station's true power is in the aggregation of platforms and ROM images, coupling them with beautiful graphics, screenshots, and videos. Within Emulation Station lies a powerful scraper interface that will read your ROM folders, look for the games, Look them up online, grab lots of information, metadata, and present your emulation games in a format that is pleasant, skinnable, and configurable. When a game is selected from Emulation Station, it either launches RetroArch in the background, passing the game's ROM file along, or it launches an external emulator like Yuzu. Emulation Station is not an emulator, just a very nice front end that has been making emulation beautiful on platforms like Raspberry Pi and Linux for a long time. With the desktop version, the developers are targeting more desktop-friendly devices like the DEC and PCs. How about a quick recap? EmuDEC is a script that installs Emulation Station, RetroArch, external emulators, and emulation tools. RetroArch uses cores or headless emulators to run the games via emulation. BIOS files are needed for complex systems that the emulator authors could not trick into running without one. ROMs are dumps of game chips, carts, discs, optical media that contain the game's code itself. And finally, Emulation Station ties the whole thing together with a beautiful shell capable of scraping data about your games and presenting it with style and theme. I hope you enjoyed this look at EmuDeck. Please like, subscribe, add your comments down below. Of course, hit the notification bell to get notifications of future videos. I'm Shane R. Monroe, and as always, thanks so much for watching, and take care.